Hi everybody, I'm Pierre Bouvard, Chief Insights Officer here at Cumulus Media in Westwood One. And today we're going to explore the myth that because of sight, sound, and motion, TV ads are superior to radio ads. Today, we're revealing the results of a massive creative effectiveness test conducted by ABX of thousands of TV and radio ads. And the study reveals that the industry belief that sight, sound, and motion is superior to audio ads is a myth. Marketers often say, we need sight, sound, and motion. And the implication is that video ads create substantially greater creative effectiveness, better brand equity, larger sales effect than an audio ad. Automakers say, I need to show my car. Quick service marketers say, I need to show succulent food shots. Healthcare, skincare advertisers want ads showing the silky hair and the smooth skin. So, to put some hard data behind this industry truism, ABX examined two years of their data consisting of 40,000 ads overall, 10,738 TV ads as part of that, and then 2,779 AM, FM radio ads across dozens and dozens of categories. This is the largest head-to-head -head examination of TV and radio ads. ABX has the largest syndicated advertising effectiveness service. Overall, they've tested 365,000 ads, 20,000 radio ads. They are the creator of the gender equality score that you hear from the Association of National Advertisers. And they've rated uh, ads not only for gender equality, but also multicultural. They're in 14 countries representing 90% of global ad spend, and they do pre and post testing across all types of advertising. They're a syndicated service, so they're asking the same questions consistently of general population. So all of their scores across all media can be compared, and their results are typically available 48 hours after the ad first starts airing, or they can be pre-tested. Their overall creative score is based upon four key measures, brand, messaging, reputation, and call to action. Brand is measuring awareness of the brand being advertised. Messaging is two components, clear benefit communication, as well as ease of understanding, reputation, is the net positive difference between those that say the ad uh, improved their opinion of the company or uh, made their opinion of the company worse. And then call to action looks at any call to action which could involve website visit, um, going to a store, seeking recommendation, making a purchase, et cetera. So the big headline, 40,000 ads tested thousands of AM, FM ads and TV ads tested. And the conclusion is that AM, FM radio ads have 92% of the creative effectiveness of TV at one fourth of the CPM. So, so much for that myth of the superiority of video ads to radio ads. In addition, ABX found that the best testing radio ads outperformed 48% of the TV ads because the overall scores are so close between TV and radio ads. You can see in the blue shaded area that the best testing radio ads did better than half of the TV ads, even, even without sight and motion. And now let's take a look at those highly visual categories like hair care and skin care. To the left of your screen, radio ads for hair care brands perform at 89% of the TV performance at a fraction of the CPM. Skin care ads, radio ads perform at 95% of the creative effectiveness of TV, again, at a fraction of the CPM. Looking at fast food, quick service restaurants, we, we see the same relationship. 
ABX looked in detail at Arby's across all of their metrics, message delivery, reputation, likability, clear brand, any action for Arby's, their radio ads performed at 92% of the TV ads at one fourth of the CPM. Same thing for Chick-fil-A. And as we look across the entire quick service restaurant category, 85 radio ads, 764 TV ads, uh, radio performed at 89% of the TV ads at one fourth of the CPM. So what is going on here? Why is it that sight, sound, and motion do not significantly outperform AM, FM, and radio ads in creative effectiveness? Well, what's happening here is that TV ads aren't seen 61% of the time. Nielsen conducted a eye tracking study where they placed uh, cameras behind television sets to see where were people looking when the TV ads came on. 39% of the time, the TV ads come on, people's eyes are right on the glass. That's the sight, sound, and motion that we all hope for. 40% of the time, the eyes are on their phone, not on the screen. So 40% of the time, the sight, sound, and motion ad is a radio ad. Just as many people hear a TV ad as see it. And then the remaining 21% of the people are out of the room. So the story here is that few of the ad impressions are actually seen, just as many are heard. A scientific study was conducted of Game of Thrones. Half the consumers were exposed to the TV show, the other half were exposed to the audiobook. And consumers were measured with probes that they were holding in their hands to measure neurological and physiological elements like galvanic skin response, sweat, heart rate. All of these are unconscious measures of engagement. And to the left of your screen, audiobook in green, the TV show Game of Thrones in orange, and across all of the measures, heart rate, body temperature, galvanic skin response, audiobook trumped TV show. Audiobook was more engaging than the TV show. What's going on here? What the scientists discovered is that spoken narratives require the participant to be engaged. They have to imagine what's going on. So this imaginative generation of the images requires greater cognitive and emotional processing. So they're physiologically more engaging. So the science is clear. Audio drives more effectiveness and creative engagement than TV. So this is a commonly accepted wisdom about the superiority of sight, sound, and motion that has been really disproven with this significant new research from creative effectiveness company ABX. And their key finding is that radio ads perform at 92% of the creative effectiveness of television at one fourth of the CPM. The best testing radio ads outperform 48% of the television ads. And in highly visual categories, hair care, skin care, Quick service restaurants, we see the same ratio. Radio performing at about 90% of TV at one fourth of the CPM. The culprit here is that so many of the sight, sound, and motion TV ads are actually not seen. Only 39% are, according to Nielsen. 40% are heard, just like a radio ad, and then the rest, 20% folks are out of the room. And the Game of Thrones study found that the imagination generated greater physiological engagement than the TV ad. The audio active group here at Cumulus Media and Westwood One is a full service advisory for marketers offering media planning recommendations, audio creative best practices and measurement services. Each week we publish a new audio case study. It can be found on our blog at cumulusmedia.com or westwoodone.com, and when you're there, you can sign up to get a free weekly email of 
the weekly case study or audio insight. Thanks so much for the opportunity to share with you the just released data from ABX disproving the myth that sight, sound, and motion of TV ads trumps radio ads. Thanks so much.